My name is Roche. I create Beauty by Roche with so much passion and ethos behind it. You can say that I tell my story with my brand. From the names of my lipsticks like Marshery to honor my mom, who instilled so much of my qualities in me. Or my liquid eyeshadow, Santorini Sky, for mine and my husband's wedding. Everything about my brand comes from my personal. My mission is to create equality and inclusion in the global beauty industry. It's time, don't you think, for us brown women to be represented in the global beauty community. All the products you see are my hard work, passion and love of beauty. I want you to experience my brand and everything it stands for. Beauty by Hi everyone and thank you for joining for another episode with Kivan with Rats. With real great fight I think we got Rosh on board. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in Sri Lanka, it's always so much work and yeah. a crazy schedule. So yes, it was really hard to get me onto this couch, but we are here now. We are here. <laughs> welcome, Rosh, thank and you. thank you for coming on board, Q&A oh, with you're friends. You're most welcome. <laughs> Tell us, give us a little bit of who is Rosh? Oh, I get this question all the time <laughs> and I hate this question. <laughs> I always say that I hate this question because I'm like, what do I hate talking about myself? I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. during the master class. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, I am. Uh. <laughs> okay, look, I own Beauty by Roche. Okay, so yes. I'm very passionate about my business. It is um, really encompasses everything I believe in. Um, so I've been in beauty for a while now. So I created my brand in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, which is a makeup and skincare brand. I'm primarily working on that now, like um, full time. Yes. Uh, I have zero time for anything <laughs> else. Um, but yeah, so I own Beauty by Roche and it's an inclusive Australian beauty brand. I'm also a beauty educator. So I teach people to do their makeup and skincare routines and things like that. Um, so I speak for Beauty Expo Australia. I'm one of the educators. Wow. So, uh, three years consecutive I've been speaking there. And yeah, I do a few women empowerment Wait. um, <laughs> things too with Women Will for Google. Um, but yeah, that sort of talks about my work life, life. but I'm also, uh, a, I love my dog Andy, <laughs> <laughs> my whole life like revolves around my dog Andy, Andy and then I've got my husband Ranga yeah. and now my dad's over there too. So yeah, we have a pretty quiet, nice, uh, content life. life. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, actually brought in women empowerment. Uh, while answering that, can you share a bit about your upbringing and how it might have influenced your passion for beauty and uh, women's empowerment? Sure, I think that's a great question actually. Yeah. No one's actually asked me how it's influenced what I do now, yeah. like my upbringing. So I had very open-minded parents. I'm an only child, I'm not spoiled at all. I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> very spoiled, but my parents always taught me to be just humble and me and talk to everyone the same i treat everybody the same and that's something that's a pet peeve of mine i hate when people talk to different people differently very true and like i can make friends anywhere honestly like when i'm in Sri Lanka, i'll just tell a story right my good friends now are the at uncles the yeah. bartenders right like i go there and hang out with them so i'd rather talk to them than yeah. you know some guy who's hitting on me yeah. honestly but like i really can make friends anywhere like yeah. it doesn't really matter to me anything you know um, so that's sort of the upbringing I had and my mom was very much into beauty and fashion as wow. to why okay. I like she never had a business she never it wasn't like that but she, in her own life in her private life she would just like to dress up and things like that so it really influenced me to um, sort of get into makeup and I used to like doing that as well and my dad worked his entire life so we are not just like I'm a first uh, like a business owner on my own, yeah. uh, a first generation business owner. So my dad's always worked really hard to provide us with the lifestyle we've had. Yeah. Um, and they were very open minded. So I, they let me be me yeah. uh, for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they regret that, but I'm just totally entirely just me because they let me find myself to yeah. be like that. Okay. So who or what has been your biggest source of inspiration? Look, I think um, 
my parents mm -hmm. like I didn't know this when I was quite young like we don't really think about these things and we think we know everything yeah <laughs> but I think my parents because I've learned so much from them um, the hard working part from my dad like yeah. he's very committed to what he does he's loyal and he works really hard and my mom she was a very passionate, over-the-top flamboyant yeah. kind of person, and I get that too. Um, and she was very resilient. She's oh, one of the okay. most resilient people I know because her, throughout her life she was quite ill. Mm -hmm. I'm quite ill too, but nobody will look at me and know that. Um, I, I've been diagnosed with many uh, different illnesses and conditions that I have to live with my entire life. But people who look at me over a camera or even in person, they'd never know that unless yeah. I told them Tell that. Tell them, yeah. But that resilience I get definitely from my mom because she was like that. She was diagnosed with many different um, conditions and she had cancer, she had different things. And um, she never showed that. Like she always just got up, got dressed, did what she had yeah. to do, you know. And she was so strong. Like you would, and she would always have a smile on her face. <laughs> Um, but I get that a lot from her, so yeah. I'm a lot like that too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, life is not easy, you know, it's really hard. And I've got a lot of different aspects of my life that are very difficult, but I try to just smile, enjoy, uh, yeah. move on. Move on you know? with life, yeah. yeah fast is fast. Yeah, and I feel like my life has changed getting on the right meds and stuff like that and managing it. Yeah. Um, but I've learned a lot from my mom in terms of struggling with health, struggling with life and things like that, but still doing the best, best. she can. And, you know, she was such a resilient, happy, vibrant person. So beautiful. How do you approach innovation and staying relevant for our ever changing beauty industry? So I try to keep up with educating myself with everything new because okay. I think that's very important. Yeah. I think we see today in the world as you get older you get irrelevant yeah. and you know it, it is hard it is hard like I don't want to do TikTok honestly yeah. I don't <laughs> like I don't have it I, I opened an account for like two minutes I think yeah. and then, but like I try to uh, in terms of those type of trends like social media yeah. I try not to like yeah. I do a few you know, here and there, it's not my favorite to do. Uh, the reason I started on Instagram or YouTube yeah. and things like that was to educate, educate women. Yeah. And, but yeah, I try to stay up to date in terms of even with skincare and mm -hmm. beauty and formulating. Yes. Right. I formulate some of my own products, obviously. Um, you have to know uh, a lot of education in terms of, you know, skin yes. and health and beauty, all of those things. Um, so yeah, I mean, and innovative products for sure, like lip and cheek tape, yeah. for example, two in one, things that are easy to use, our eyeliners and things like that are a gel formula yes. that is created into a pencil. Oh wow. So it's not always seen and it's great. Like yes. you can do like really dark black, black like liners yes. and stuff like that with it. Although it's just a pencil, it's so easy to use. So yeah, so I try to, innovate like things that are also easy for women to use and use. things like that yeah yeah that's actually i think that's what we need these days yes. you know, on the go you yes. can just use it yes and what keeps you motivated and driven it's a good question i don't really know i've always been quite a motivated person if i like something yeah <laughs> i mean i and i'm when i say i'm spoiled and spoiled in this way i don't th do things that i don't like yeah so that's a privilege, right? Yeah. Like sometimes, I mean, oh, look, I, I mean, I still have to take out the trash, which I don't like, but I have to do, you know. Like, I mean, there are things, okay, don't get me wrong. But I try not to make that my primary living, like, you know, like work and life. Yes. So I try not to do that because then life gets very difficult, yes. right, when you're doing something you don't like, like all the time. Yeah. So it's easy to stay motivated in things that I love. I love creating products. I love hearing stories about women who couldn't find lipstick mm -hmm. shades for themselves yeah. yes uh, you know different skin tones especially darker skin toned women here in Sri Lanka, Lanka who say oh my god they come they hold my hand and say thank you so much for creating shades that are appropriate for them yeah that uh, that I've thought of them when I was creating these shades so 
that is motivation enough and that's really because that is what i want to change that is Very what i true. want to do because even in sri lanka you see brands coming up yeah. but i feel like they're not making things for sri lanka no. and that's no. so sad because i have to come from australia and make it make and give it. it to them right like i mean it's sad but i really wanted to be inclusive and to embrace and celebrate diversity so that's why i have shades for everyone and it's easy to stay motivated when it's something you love and I'm being rewarded for it too, yes, you know, yes. it's been a great journey, so, yeah. You answered half of the que next question also. <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> so, what I wanted to ask was how you see your brand's impact on the overall beauty industry, standards of diversity and inclusivity. Okay. Um, so in Australia, I'm one of the first brown Sri Lankan owned right run businesses for beauty. Yeah. I think I think I have a long way to go and if I can make some changes, that's great. Yeah. I was also the first Sri Lankan to speak at Beauty Expo Australia. Wow. So they've never really had a brown woman on that stage, on the main stage speaking. Okay. And I like to try and educate people about, like for example, like if you do foundation that is too light for you, it looks yeah. grey. Yes. And about colour correcting for brown skin tones and I think those are very important and I think in a global space we don't see enough brown women, yeah. Sri Lankan women yes. being represented, doing things like this and in the beauty space um, I think it, there still has to be more, Yes, you know, um, so it is a journey and look in 10 years maybe there will be because yeah. when I started like you know almost 10 years ago beauty blogging and yeah. like you know youtube and teaching women i was the first of its kind in sri lanka so True. like that um and and then i stopped because there were so many that came on and there wasn't a need anymore mm -hmm. you know there wasn't a need for content creation or youtube yeah. and things like that for it and i moved on to other things like the business yeah but I think it's very important that we are being represented in campaigns and that people understand our skin tone because even in Australia or in the US um, when you're getting your makeup done that's like a massive problem because yes. people haven't done your uh, like those type of skin, skin. tones uh, and they don't know how to work with yes. it so there yes. has to be a lot more education and I think the black communities have had that change yeah. slowly I mean they had a hard time yes. getting yes. there and now there are black owned businesses and you know representation and they are trying and it's gone a long way from 10 years ago so i feel like even us like and i feel we as a as the brown community have a, already an issue within the community where we only represent and promote yeah fairer and lighter skin exactly. tones yes. so in bollywood if you see you know it's very hard for a dark girl to make it make there. it there it's very it was very hard 10 years ago for a quite a brown tan girl to make it even here in sri lanka now you see True. it more yes. on the runways on tv yes. on magazines but it 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 took a process to get there even back then the models were skinny tall fair, fair. right <laughs> so we need to move away from this and it's not just about skin tone but about body sizes exactly and different real bodies right and height issues and all of these things because there is such a standard of beauty that we're taught skinny tall, tall. fair right <laughs> probably straight hair yeah, long you know it's it's really hard we live in a world where it's really hard to just be happy with yourself like we want to change so many things and I don't think I try to say this and I think you were at the master class and yes. I said this I don't think we need to change, change everything because like I think your you know imperfections are what makes you uniquely Me. beautiful very true yeah and you know people used to like say oh fix your teeth buck teeth i love my teeth yes. it makes me yeah. me i look like bugs bunny it's fine <laughs> like i mean it's cute but like you know you have to learn to love yourself yes. it's not easy. easy so and 
external pressure, some more societal pressure saying, oh, you've gained a lot of weight, no, can't you do something, or oh, you're losing hair, no, can't. oh, you're too, oh, you got so dark, can't you? This is all, it's already hard internalizing these things, but when always there's pressure in this community. Yeah. So I think before talking about global perspectives, I think we also need to look inward and there's already problems here within our communities where we need to change that mindset to embrace who we are, even with all our yeah. imperfections yes. and skin tone, you know, plus size being short or not having long hair are not imperfections <laughs> okay they're just who you are and that is completely fine yeah. but this is the narrative that we have to change and it's perpetuating in our generations as well and that's exactly. what's sad we need to at least bloody change it okay <laughs> for our children okay like for 50 years from now that we are not going yeah, through this yeah. well women of women and men yeah. are made to feel so insecure very true. Right? So I saw this because I saw this difference. I think you were there at the Mrs. India yes. contest. When you you see the different uh, contestants, the, the first pregnant uh, yes. ladies took the stage. Yes. I mean, you you see the different body types yes. and different heights. heights yes. It was totally a different uh, show. That I is just what wish. We need. Yeah, and yes. I just wish that even whatever the passions that we are holding in yeah. Sri Lanka will have the same uh, inclusivity. Correct. I would like to see a girl that's different winning one of these. One who is not, you know, 5'11", yeah. skinny, yes. fair. Someone who is not any yeah. of those things. Pageants itself do have connotations that are problematic. Problems, yeah. Because, you know, you're now judging someone on appearance. I like to see more, because people are more than your appearance. Yeah. This is why they need to stop telling you either that even when you lose weight, oh, you've lost weight very <laughs> nice now. Don't say that. It just stop commenting on people's appearances, right? Did you go on a diet or yeah, what was the yeah, diet? What did you do? Did you just not eat? <laughs> like, I would have died if I didn't eat, you know? But like, you know, it's just, it's those little things that we have to learn to live in a civil society. And I might be very, very unpopular for saying this, yeah. but I think a lot of people have to hear this. Very true. And a lot yeah, of women yeah. have man men do go through this on you've gotten so old oh. so don't you want to do something but like you know <laughs> we really need to stop like it's just it's insane. insane it's insane your lip shades yes has very unique names and there's a story behind each name how did you come up with these um to know they're just a part of my life like I wanted to make my brand quite personal um, and I just think of stories in my life in my past and things that are personal to me yeah. and came up with the names and like I made them a little bit more creative I'm very good at the arts I love creative things yeah. um, I'm good at like that's why I think beauty is one of my things I can cook I can do anything intuitively <laughs> and creative I like those kind of things um, so yeah my lip shades are so there's one for Sri Lanka called Shri okay and it's an orange terracotta type of color and I thought that went really well with Sri Lanka yeah um, the fire in the Sri Lankan people you know that type of resilience and also you know orange represents us parts of the the flag, flag. Well. so I also have one for my mom so it's called Ma and sh her name was Shereen so it's called Ma Shereen wow and I also have one for the way my husband and I met, like our story, <laughs> and it's called Tinder Date. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's one for my dad for his birthday in 1955. Okay. There's one for my dog. Really? Uh, yeah, it's called Joy. It's a new shade. Oh, wow. And it's because I call him Andy Joy. Like, yeah. it's the joy of my life. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so everything like so also like even my liquid eyeshadows, they all have like names that mean something to me. Um, they're all from my my life, you all know. Right. And okay. Santorini sky yes. for me and my husband getting married in Santorini, and then a New York feeling for my time. In, I spent three months in America. Uh, on a nice. solo trip, oh, wow. uh, so it was. Uh, I called it a New York feeling. Yeah. It was a feeling that I had. Yeah. So, yeah. So everything is quite personal, and I like to um, keep it that way and just make quite um, interesting and yet stories. Someone's telling me uh, one of my uh, 
uh, someone who uh, works a lot with the brand with me, she was saying, if someone like decodes all your products, yeah. they'll know your entire life. Life. <laughs> and probably your address, because one of the one of the liquid eyeshadows is also like the estate I live oh, wow. in, and the city name, so put together, so don't stalk me in Australia. So, so yeah. <laughs> you know, there is a lot of criticism these days, and you know, people talk behind our backs. So, how do you handle these kind of things and setbacks? Look. Uh, I think the drama is less in Australia, so it's a lot easier yeah. when I live there. Um, it is a lot less. Um, but look, it, it's there even in business, even in personal life, it's there. It's just, I think the best thing to do is ignore it. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard <laughs> to ignore it, but to ignore it and do nothing about it and not go down to their level and be petty. Very true. Um, and like talking behind your back and backstabbing is just a part of like, I don't know, it's it's just everywhere now, you know, here and like it is what it is, you know, and like I try to not get sucked into the drama. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drama everywhere. <laughs> yes. I just try to just float on no. by and fly on by back to Australia and like live in my little like estate. <laughs> Just have my dog and my husband and my dad. <laughs> Leave <So>, my bubble. <laughs> can you provide uh, more uh, insight about your vision to Bear? Um, yes, so Bear was a women empowerment campaign that I did. Um, I was a victim of abuse mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was married before for 10 years. Okay. And I had a very tough life. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like I always tell people it was almost like I was asleep and I woke up and okay. like I just saw everything in a different light. Okay. Um, you know, when it's happening to you and you're in those situations, it's really hard to see. Really hard to see. Um, I always tell people like you can't judge anyone until you're in that situation. Never. It's so easy to say, oh my God, why didn't you leave? Yeah. Like it's so easy to say that, but it's just, it's hard to do. It's hard to do and you have completely lost your sense of self, a sense of self-confidence and yeah, so this is why I brought forward Bear, which was like an empowerment okay. movement uh, to tell women that they are more than that abuse, that they are more than all of those things. Yes. And a little bit about like beauty involved as well, so that we can tell women, look, I always tell people, I, although I wear makeup, yeah. I don't always wear makeup. Yes. Uh, I always am an advocate to tell people to be themselves and be whatever they want to want. be. So you want to put on makeup, mm. you shouldn't be judged for that. Yes. You don't want to, you still shouldn't be judged for yeah. that. Like I'm not going to go to the supermarket with makeup on, yeah. right? Or my hair <laughs> extensions on. I look like I'm a homeless person yeah. when I fly in like a plane, but that's okay. You know, I don't mind that, yeah. you know. Um, but I just want people to feel comfortable in their own skin and their self and to find that confidence to just, you know, like just pull it off yeah. either way, Yes. you know, with or without makeup and stuff like that. So yeah, there was just something to promote that sort of okay. uh, notion. Nice. You were featured uh, on Vogue's India's uh, ninth anniversary, if yes. I'm correct? Yes, that's correct. What was your reaction back then? Uh, I I I thought I thought the email was a spam email. <laughs> I was like, not true, right? Like you know, you get all these emails. I mean, I still to this day get yeah. spam emails, right? Like you know, random people saying they're from all these places. I swear, it was a girl called Jerusha. <laughs> she emailed me, and I swear, I thought, no, nah, it's just a scam. Where's the link to click on? <laughs> you know, to take off my money or something. I don't know. Like I was just like, what is this? And then. No, it was real. I, I mean, I did reply and okay. I was cautious when I replied to things like that. I don't click on anything. Yes, yes. Don't click on links. <laughs> they take all your money. <laughs> okay, or your identity. I don't know. But yeah, but like, um, yeah, I thought it was, just, I thought, I thought it wasn't real. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was really happy. I didn't even, like, at that time, I didn't even think about it really yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, and yeah they featured me as an upcoming south asian beauty blogger yeah we have a few more questions stay on put with us my name is rosh i create beauty by rosh with so much passion and ethos behind it 
You can say that I tell my story with my brand. From the names of my lipsticks like Marshery to honor my mom, who instilled so much of my qualities in me. Or my liquid eyeshadow, Santorini Sky, for mine and my husband's wedding. Everything about my brand comes from my personal. My mission is to create equality and inclusion in the global beauty industry. It's time, don't you think, for us brown women to be represented in the global beauty community. All the products you see are my hard work, passion and love of beauty. I want you to experience my brand and everything it stands for. Beauty by Brush. Rosh, your masterclass, the Verse series is starting. Tell us about it. Um, so yeah, so it's already started for 2023. We've okay. already done Singapore, Maldives, Sri Lanka. Um, and Australia. Okay. So four of them is done and we're headed to London in two months nice. um, and we're doing our London masterclass and that will be our final one for okay. this year. Um, it's been a hell of a journey, a lot of airplanes, <laughs> a lot of different places um, but yeah it's been a real learning curve as well because yes. every time we learn something you know um, about how to run the event. I run my entire event on my own. Okay. I don't have a production company. I just get a production do, to do like stage lights, sounds, mm -hmm. video walls, those okay. things. But I run the most of it. Okay. Um, I do have a PR company that handles like the PR side of things. Uh, but yeah, it, in Sri Lanka is always the biggest event and second Australia. Yeah, okay. um, the other, other places are a little smaller than Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka is about 300, we had 350 people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was a cinnamon grand and yeah, it was fantastic. I was very happy with the event um, and I got really, really good like feedback. Everyone loved it. Um, so yeah, so we'll be back next year as well with the oh, series. Nice. Yeah. So we try to do it every year other than when it was COVID. Yeah. Um, because of the fact that I couldn't do it because of COVID, that's yeah. when I started the brand. Oh, because wow. I couldn't do my 2020 masterclass and I was like, I don't want the year to go to waste because 2019 we had had a very successful masterclass series. Okay. Uh, with different cities, including Thailand and Indonesia and things oh, like that, nice. so different countries okay. as well. Um, in 2020, we were supposed to do the masterclass, but COVID hit and everything was cancelled. We couldn't move around or fly into any of these cities, do any of my work. Um, that's when I decided to actually start my brand because nice. I was like, I just didn't want to sit around and yeah. this is something I can be in Australia, be in my house and do and yeah. figure out supplies and all of that. So we did that. Um, but yeah, the Masterclass World Series is something I started in 2019 and um, with much success we will continue it on in different cities nice. um, and I teach everyday women to do their makeup. So what like advice that. would you give to the women who are struggling to embrace their true self? Look, it's, it's hard especially if you grew up in a society or a home that was always trying to change you, yes. always telling you what's wrong with you, so it's hard. But <laughs> it's something we'll have to learn. I was privileged to have parents who always <coughs> let me be me yeah. and embrace who I am and just like it or not, take it and leave it a type of attitude, right? But it's everyone doesn't have that. I always yeah. say that every I, I empathize and I understand that everyone does not have that upbringing, everyone does not have that support system but I did so it was easier but you have to stand up for yourself as much as it's hard as much as it's hard to be you in a society that's ever trying to change you even maybe in your own home it's difficult but you got to do what makes you happy because at the end of the day you don't want to look back when you're like 60 70 and be like I never did anything I loved I never got to be who I am. Mm -hmm. I never even discovered who I am. And this is something that you have to do by yourself to yeah. discover who are you. Because I did that on my own and much later in my life. I mean, look, uh, my parents always let me be me and I was always this person. But obviously, because I was in a bad marriage, I also lost myself, right? Like I always yeah. also like just kind of withered away. So after that experience, I had to sit down with myself, not date anyone, not find comfort in anyone because I was used to that after 10 yes, years of being. Yes, so of course. I had to f do the hard work and go through that difficulty of, okay, what do I like? Do I actually like this food? Was it something that was influenced by my ex? Or 
what, what do I actually think about this? So I had to bring myself back to me to think, who am I? In my real core, core. in my, like when I was 28, 29. So because you change, right? From when you're 16 to 29, yes. 30, you change. So I had to free find myself. And that was a great experience. And I ex like encourage everyone to do that. And then unapologetically be you, right? You don't have to apologize to anyone, anyone. for being bubbly or being quiet or being you know introverted or extroverted or someone who wore a lot of makeup and wanted to be flamboyant and wear nice clothes you don't have to apologize for that and if you want to wear like a hoodie and shorts and like not give a shit <laughs> you should have to apologize for that either so i mean i'm talking in terms of like looks and yeah. dressing yes. but also in what you want to do you want to pursue a career as a doctor or an artist or a pianist or whatever, whatever it is, I think you should give it a shot and just really find what you're passionate about and who you are as a person and then not give give in to anyone else, I think. Yeah. About <laughs> what other people think, you know, it's hard, but when you get there, you will be, you'll be free. Yeah. I like how open and you know you tell those words. I remember even during the master class. Oh, I'm just so like raw, but yeah. So are you more of a night person or a day person? Mm, I don't know. I think I'm a day person. <laughs> like I'll be yawning by like ten o'clock. Yesterday night at uncle's, I was yawning by 11 o'clock, I swear. And I'm like, trying to hide it so that people don't think I'm an idiot. I'm like, oh, no, I song, oh. Like, yeah. Like, I was pretending to sing to the song and yawning. So, but, yeah, I think I'm a day person. My husband will say, ah, you will party when you're in Sri Lanka now till 2 o'clock with me. At 9 o'clock, you're sleeping. But, yeah, I mean, like, it just depends. But, I suppose I'm a day person. Day person. Yeah. Nice. So, anyone who follows you on Instagram, follows Andy as well as your beautiful home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what made you create two individual pages uh, for them? My God, my dog and my house are narcissists now because <laughs> of me. I have no idea. Look, Andy, he was my everything when I got him. So the story with Andy is the reason I'm so obsessed with him and like into him is because it was this first Christmas without my mom when my mom died. Okay. And I was in a foreign country in Australia, obviously, and I was alone. My dad was still here in Sri Lanka. It's very lonely. And my husband and I uh, discussed that maybe getting a dog is good. Actually, we didn't discuss it. We just said it. <coughs> and then we said it one morning and we were like, we're off to the shelter, I guess. And then we just picked out a dog. But like, yeah, and Andy's really helped me come out of that. Yes. I was quite not okay you know only my husband knows this not even probably my dad because i didn't want to talk about it to him and put pressure on him after my dad mom died yeah. it was really difficult for me I, I really struggled like i thought my divorce and you know <coughs> my ex leaving me was the hardest thing i'd ever gone through it was nothing compared to when i lost my mom so it was a really hard time actually for me so I uh, when I got Andy like he helped me so much like I really struggled after my mom passed okay. away um, because she was really my best friend and my everything like she was my person you know my even when I was a kid like it was her I would go to before even a friend so it was it was really hard like I didn't really tell my dad even like how hard it, I mean we didn't talk about it that much because it was hard for him too I mean, we were very close as a family it was just the three of us always um, but yeah, I mean, look, we've got oh, gotten through it and dad is there now, so I'm really happy. But um, yeah, so that's why Andy was like an obsession. I mean, now I don't even post on that page, <laughs> but like, he's like my child. child. Okay? Like, so, so yeah, in my house, well, that's not odd in Australia. A lot of people, when they're building a house, they okay. have like a building community where we can oh, talk wow. to each other. It's okay. really nice. Actually, I made a lot of friends as well there. And everyone who follows that page is actually like from WA who are building in that state ah, right, and okay. like things like that. Uh, we met like neighbors and like other people and we share our experience of building and our journey. Nice. Is really, it was a boom when we built. Okay. 
there was a building boom so there were a lot of delays so there were a lot of frustrations which we all shared together yeah. as well um, and now it's just a styling page for my house which I also like see I like yeah, anything creative, creative. Like anything like styling it's all up there carpets to barbecue yeah. machines to yes. everything <laughs> yes and like um, I've also got like furniture and stuff that my parents own from Sri Lanka nice. which mean a lot to me so yeah so I style my house with a really nice like sort of mix of traditional and contemporary like, okay. um, and modern so uh, and it's a nice touch of Sri Lanka as well okay India, so beautiful you're a home brand lover what's your favorite home brand hmm in Sri Lanka yes I won't call them a home brand anymore but they definitely started in their home is Sits Cupcakes Oh yeah. <laughs> I just absolutely just devour them and I love them and Sita your cupcakes are just <laughs> full of I don't want to even say I think like you put some ingredient in there. I would eat like four of them in one sitting. I remember during the master class you got no. I love Sits cupcakes <laughs> like I love Sitz. if I like I can't order one I have to order at least two and above and I will eat all of them and like my best friend Sanri she always says it's such a like entertaining thing to watch me eat those cupcakes since I was young like since Sita was in her house and making these and we used to drive there when I, I used to work next to long time ago this okay. is long years ago like 20 plus years ago I used to work near her house okay so I used to drive there and buy cupcakes and just eat in the car <laughs> like they were just they're so good if you haven't tried them anyone who's watching they're one home business they're not home anymore but they started in their home and it's still run by her, you nice. know, it's such a family business type of thing. Um, I love, love <laughs> <sits>. <laughs> What's your favorite way to uh, go on with your weekend, a leisure weekend? Watch Netflix with my husband. Mm -hmm. Now my dad is also there <laughs> and Ellie. That's like my perfect life, nice. okay? Like okay. order Uber Eats. I like cooking too. Okay. And then all of us, if we can just be and just like watch Netflix, really I'm a homebody. Like okay. I love that too. I love both. Like I love dressing up and going out. I miss that sometimes when I do that, the other thing for a long time. Yeah. But then I also like just doing nothing. Ordering or eating in bed and like watching TV. Like I love that too. I will binge TV shows and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of your unique talents that no one knows. See, with Instagram, everybody knows everything. <laughs> that is the problem. What are my unique talents that people don't know? I can envision anything to life. I'm very good at sketching outfits and stuff. So I oh, create okay. some outfits too for myself. Okay. Uh, some of the things that people always DM me and say, Oh my God, I love that skirt. Where did you get it? I'm like, Oh, I created that. Like, so that's maybe a hidden thing because Cooking, everybody knows. Everyone, everyone knows. already yes. asks me for recipes, and I'm like, I just I have no recipes. I just cook, like with the intuition. But maybe designing, like I, I can do anything where I can envision that, mm -hmm. and I'm good at even like telling other people, like, okay, what shades would look good on them with lipsticks or like clothes, clothes. and things like okay. that. I'm good at envisioning uh, things. Things are yeah. nice. Are there any specific beauty? products or rituals that holds a special place in your routine? Yes, in my routine, my go-to two things that I cannot live without, actually I have a few, but one of them is my Peptox Serum. Okay. I will use it every day, morning and night, every day, like I swear by it for the last three years. Yeah. I also like my Peptox mask that goes with it, which is once a week. So those are like my holy grail every day. Okay. I love my designer lip and cheek tint, mm -hmm. always wear it, wearing it now, no. pretty much wear it. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, if you want to know what I'm wearing, I'm wearing designer. <laughs> and uh, my eyeliner and mascaras I use all the time. So those are, I would say those are just more pretty much in my routine. Something that really means a lot to me, well all my lipstick shades and names and like the business itself like means a lot to me to be. because like even Liliard, which is a very, very popular nude shade yeah. of mine, which was like my favorite before designer came yeah. along. Um, <laughs> it's for my dog, Risey, who passed away uh, oh, okay. during COVID. It was really hard. She had like diabetes and it was a really tough, like, goodbye because it was just on the phone oh. and because of oh. COVID, I couldn't really see her. Um, 
Yeah, her name was Raisi, Raisi. and I used to call her Lily. Okay. So that's why it's Lily and Lily R. R. Okay. Right, yeah. So looking back at your career so far, what is your most, uh, or could I say, what are you most proud of? I think my last masterclass. Okay. I think that was easy because, like, I didn't realize the magnitude of what I can do until like I saw the 350 I heard I thought it was gonna be 300 people and they had to put more chairs also. yes they did yeah they had to put more chairs <laughs> like the cinnamon crew was really nice they were really good they put more chairs because there were more people who are coming and coming and coming and I'm like until the end of the masterclass I didn't know how many I knew about 300 yeah. maybe there, but it was about 350 and yeah like you know, people who normally don't even sit through these events, sat through the yes. whole thing. Yes. And um, like, it was like, I, I was, I was wowed myself. Yeah. So I was very happy and humbled and I was very grateful for everyone who came because I think Ramani Fernando has really helped me in terms of uh, building my brand as well. Like she's really supportive and she was a sponsor for my masterclass. And obviously, Rosi Sananayaka came, and yes. those things were really like meaningful to me. And you know, I work a lot with PR, so Anika brought her friends as well, and she was very supportive. So those things are very, they like I take that as something very special to me. Not just like oh, you guys came, but it was. I'm very grateful and yeah. thankful, and that is I think my most proudest because I think I've done lots of things like Colombo Fashion Week, yes, yes. Uh, Beauty Expo Australia. Uh, Google, I don't know, whatever, okay, <laughs> Netflix, whatever. But I think that masterclass was mine. Yeah. Like, CFW and things, I went as a sponsor. <coughs> yes. Uh, Beauty Expo, I spoke as an educator. Educator. But this was my event, yes. you know, it was my thing. And I thought it went off swimmingly, so I was very happy about that. I think everyone got to know who Sharon was. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm the best friend from Doha every time, like two minutes. Sharon, <laughs> do you have this? And then everyone was saying how I was like, Ranga, I don't have eyelash glue. And like he was running around, everyone was like, oh my god, your husband is so sweet and like patient. But but yeah, I mean, and they also got to know who I really am in yeah. my essence. Yeah. Like I'm a bit silly and crazy, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> what would you give uh, the best advice that you would give the younger self of you? Younger self of me? Yeah. My God, personal life, lots. Yes. Uh, personal life, I would say, uh, don't get so fascinated by big talkers. Like, because my ex husband is a big talker. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh wow, and catch on to every word he would say, and he's an idiot. But I didn't know that at that time. But, like, you know, my big God. Talkers, <laughs> you know, they'll say all this bullshit. But, you know, like, I would take time in okay. getting to know myself and before getting because it's so easy to get swept off your feet and get into these like that was a massive situation yes, i got into yes. for 10 years of my life you know so i would be careful of things like that look i learned from that a lot it's changed me a lot okay i'm very empathetic as well because of that and i was a that experience really made like you know it's a shitty experience but like it it really made me so i don't know if i would not if I would wish I had never gone through it, maybe yeah. sometimes it's it's hard. But in terms of work, nothing. nothing. Because honestly, my advice for other people is take time. They don't do things too early. Yeah. Okay. If I, I'm very glad I started my business when I started my business because it had depth and it had understanding that I couldn't have had in my twenties. It it wouldn't have been the same. Same. Because I wouldn't be the same. Yes. I wouldn't have been this mature self yeah. of mine to have created what I created beautifully and with meaning and not too quickly, you know. So yeah. so I wouldn't do any of that differently at all uh -huh. because I don't wish, oh, I wish I did it earlier. No, everything in time was better. Better. Stay put. We have our rapid round next. My name is Roche. I create Beauty by Roche with so much passion and ethos behind it. You can say that I tell my story with my brand. From the names of my lipsticks like Marjorie to honor my mom, who instilled so much of my qualities in me. Or my liquid eyeshadow, Santorini Sky, for mine and my husband's wedding. Everything about my brand comes from my personal. 
My mission is to create equality and inclusion in the global beauty industry. It's time, don't you think, for us brown women to be represented in the global beauty community. All the products you see are my hard work, passion and love of beauty. I want you to experience my brand and everything it stands for. Beauty by Okay, we are back. And it's five rapid questions, okay. short answers. <laughs> Tell me short answers from a hell lucky and all those. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Success to you is happiness. If a genie gave you three wishes, what would it be? That's not very rapid, no? <laughs> Just three. three wishes, yes. Travel anywhere in the world mm -hmm. easily. Okay. Make sure my family is happy okay. and well taken care of, and that Andy can live forever. <laughs> very easy. Andy is most important. Very easy. Very. He is, every time my therapist also says, Anytime I talk about anything, if they go always in that order, I'm like Andy Ranga <laughs> It sounds bad, but like Andy is everything. <laughs> is there anything you want to change in your life so far? No, but I wish I was a skinny person and I could eat anything. There oh are people gosh. like that. <laughs> there are. There are comment here. I eat anything. I'm trying to gain weight. Good for you. Good. <laughs> eat some bread. Go. Go, come eat with me. <laughs> I wish that because then I, I don't have to listen to Ani every day. Either I've lost weight or I've gained weight. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, yo yo. -ing, yo. So. <laughs> the most grateful thing in your life? My parents for who they were and my husband for who he is. Those two. Those two. And my final question, your motto in life? Just do it. <laughs> no, just if you want to do something, just do it. That's it. And then uh, it really is yes. that. Just do it. Because I don't have regrets about what I didn't do. Very because true. Because you'll always wonder what it would have become. become. So I do and then if it was, a, it was bad, it was bad. It's fine. You learn from those things. Just do it. Well, guys, that's the end of another episode. Thank you, Rosh, for, you know, coming on board at this last minute. Thank you very much for coming on board welcome. with us. I hope I thoroughly entertained your <laughs> viewers. <laughs> and the guy behind the camera is laughing his ass off. So, so yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys in another episode.